Hello, I'm Interlysian, and this is uh, the answers to the subscriber Q&A, where I got the questions last time because I hit 50,000 subscribers and now I'm going to answer the questions. So I've split them up into three categories. Three categories. I was like, two, three. I'm having problems counting today. Right, so we have, um, silly, personal, I think. I think that one's personal. And then this one is gaming, YouTube, and stuff. Like, YouTube and gaming, all in one, because they were similar. And there was also very few ones related to actual, like, YouTubing, mostly related to gaming, so I put them all together. So, right, personal, gaming, YouTube, silly. Um, we'll start off with gaming and YouTube. From SMK Sean. Is there a particular genre of games you're passionate about? If so, what is it, and what are your favourite games in the genre? I'm not, I'm saying, I'd say I'm really passionate about, like, management games, because, like, they haven't been done in ages. Like, right, anyone plays Theme Hospital? Amazing game. And things like, you know, the original Theme Park World, they were really good, and then no one made any good ones for a long time. And now we're getting, like, Prison Architect and RimWorld, and, you know, some others, and they're really good. And they're all, of course, indie, because big companies are like, ha ha ha, uh, yeah, no one's gonna buy them. And then they prove that they're actually really popular, maybe not the popular, say, COD, which also sucks, now. Um, but, you know, I'm, I think I'm passionate about them in a way, like, I like to fight for the underdog. And they were, and they were kind of, they've been the underdog for a very long time, so. But I'm passionate about a lot of games, really. Like, I play a lot of genres, so. Um, I will put this there. I'm gonna have to clean up later. Um, personal one. What is it? From streaky one, lots of zeros one. And now question: What, what was your family's reaction when you told them you were going to be a full time on YouTube? And what do they think of your channel now? Um, I don't think they really fully understood what YouTube was. I think they vaguely, they're like, they knew what it was, as in it's a website, and they didn't know anything about how to make videos and how to make money off them, and if there was like this big gaming scene, so they were like, uh, okay, we have no idea, well, they don't really know what I do anyway, still, somewhat, um, I think they've watched a couple of my videos, that's kind of scary, I should probably stop swearing, balls, um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yes, so, they were okay with it because they didn't really know what it was. <laughs> because originally before that I made websites, so they only vaguely knew what that was as well. So, anyway, right, silly questions. From Debated Nothing. How hard is it to fight off, to fight off, to fight off all the babes that must be throwing themselves at you? Sticky out tongue face. I don't know, I'm really unfit at the moment. Like, being a YouTuber, you don't tend to, you know, actually get time to go out and you work at your desk and you're home all day. So, you know, you get really unfit. So it's kind of really hard to fight. I think I'm more into the ducking and the weaving. Like, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm so, like, skinny from the lack of actually bothering to eat that I can, you know, duck and weave a bit better than I can fight. So, if I had to fight, it'd be pretty, pretty hard. So. Also, I know lots of girls who are actually fairly fit, so they could probably take me in a fight. Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I should try and clean them up later. Um, drinking time. Another gaming and YouTube one. From Coolie Kid 443 How many enter Elysiums does it take to aero break into Jules' atmosphere, going to very low atmosphere to make it out? About 0.9 of me. Because I did manage it well on stream, so obviously a bit of me was like reading the chat. Which has got me in so many problems before now. Um, that was actually a really good live stream. He's referenced. Probably loads of you have no idea what the question is. But um, in a live stream, we ended up accidentally going a lot deeper into Jaw than we were meant to. And we made it out! With all the sites from the low atmosphere, so that was really cool. Uh, Kerbal Space Room, because, you know, I assume some of you haven't played KSP. Probably most of you have. Um, if you haven't, go play it. Right, uh, personal. 
QQQ1701. What game system did you first play or grow up on? I think I first played a ZX Spectrum, like, when I was like seven-ish. But I grew up on... I got an N64 when, Poke when Pokemon was going out of fashion. I remember this because I got a Pikachu N64 because they were going cheap. They were 10 quid cheaper because they were getting rid of all the Pokemon stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll get this, 10 quid cheaper, which was like a lot of money when you're like, I don't know, 13 or whatever I was. I was probably 14, no, 13? I don't know. Anyway, so I got a, P a, a Pikachu Nintendo, and uh, then I got a second-hand PS1, and it was naff. Like, the, the power button got stuck down, so you had to rub it to get it to come back up. It was, it was fun. And then I got a PS2, so sort of many consoles, how much... Dirk Spectrum, N64, PS1, PS2, Xbox 360. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. Yeah, the three red rings of... Three red lights of... Doom, death, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I... Many times. Um, luckily I only had to buy an extra one of those. So... Um, was that personal? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's personal. Right. Silly question. Game Guru. Do you have a secret fetish with ducks? Ducks. Sex with ducks. We'll do it in the rain. <laughs> I, in all seriousness, the university that I... I went to, um, really has a lot of ducks there, so I think that's kind of a, a requirement, really, for graduating from there. Um, right, um, gaming again. Oh, drinking time. Um, from Carson Barber, what games coming out soon are you most looking forward to? That's really difficult. What games am I looking forward to that are coming out soon? Obviously, like, the full, like, gold releases of, like, RimWorld, KSP, etc. But I don't know when they're coming out. Probably not soon. Um, Hearts of Iron 4 would be good, which is, like, the new Paradox grand strategy game that goes, like, in the period of Second World War, which is really cool. But that won't be out until 2015. What will be out this year? Thief is gonna suck. Title 4 might be fun. I know, I know I'm like not a massive fan of triple A's, but Titanfall actually looks like it's going to change something about the goddamn triple A genre, which has been the same for like the last five years. Um, so that might get me back into first person shooting. Well, I haven't done that in ages. That's going to be weird. I used to use my Xbox for that. I have to learn PC controls. Hmm. I guess Titanfall maybe? I don't know. I can't actually think of what games are coming out this year. I tend to find out too short before they come out to, like, I don't think ahead on this. Um, obviously, like, the rest of the episodes of The Wolf Among Us, because that is amazing. The second one was a little bit, you know, it was a bit shorter than expected. It wasn't quite as full of awesome, but it was still great. So, yeah, Wolf Among Us is amazing. Um, personal! Chris Schall. Schall? Shall. What are some of the books behind you? Oh, I've moved. Sorry! <laughs> Any favourites? Yes. Um, I can pick up three books right off the bat. Uh, where are they? <laughs> it's not right off the bat because I'm not picking them up right now. Where are they? Yes! One, two, three. Oh, it's like it was planned. It really wasn't. I'm not actually that well planned. Um, the Star's My Destination, also known as I don't know if that's in focus or not. Tiger, Tiger, uh, by Alfred Bester. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm, I basically I love character progression. Like that's a requirement for anything I like, like films, books, TVs, everything. So this has got really good character progression. It takes like this thug basically at the beginning and turns him into a character you like towards the end. And it's just like, wait a minute, how did I forgive him for all the really bad stuff he did? I like him now. What's going on? It's really cool. Uh, it's basically about a world 
uh, well, solar system, where um, people learn to teleport just naturally, and then it causes socioeconomic collapses and stuff, and everything. It's a really good book. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, Larry Niven and J Jer Jerry, Jerry Pornell. Yeah, Jerry Pornell. The Moting God's Eye. This was actually recommended by Scott Manley. And it's amazing. It's definitely my top three. Like, this is my top three. Um, it's about um, contact with an alien race in the future. And then... It's really interesting. I, I don't want to say anything else because it's basically about this contact with this alien race and trying to figure out if they're friendly or not and how the society works and so on. It's really cool. I would, I would re definitely recommend that one. And then, right, this is going to be a, a, a Warhammer book. Warhammer 40,000. Like, probably at least half of you know what that is. Right, so they've got an amazing universe behind Warhammer 40k, but a lot of the fiction is a bit hit and miss. Like, a lot of them just ignore canon when they're writing this fiction, which is kind of stupid. I don't know why they let people do that. Because it kind of ruins this lovely background, rich background they've got for the game. But, um, this... Dan Abnett, he's an absolutely amazing writer for them. Um, and this is definitely one of my favourite books ever. It's actually an omnibus, like, it's three books. But it's, uh, Eisenhorn by Dan Abnett. And it's absolutely brilliant. If you, if you know anything about 40k, I read this book. If you don't... You might not understand all the background to it, but basically it's about an Inquisitor. So, for those of you who don't know, Inquisitors are the guys who go around the Imperium of Man, which spans the galaxy, rooting out heresy, cults, demons and stuff, right? And he, he starts off in the very first book being like really Puritan, like really righteous, like, I will never use the bad guy stuff to beat the bad guys. And then he goes all the way through the three books, and they span like... like one book set here, one book set like 50, 50, 60 years later, and the next book set like 70 years later. And it sort of follows his progress as he gets more and more radical, like using chaos -y things against chaos and demon hosts and so on. Basically following how he progresses through from Puritan to radical. Absolutely amazing. Like, because it is character progression, and I love character progression, it's, I find this an amazing book. And if you at all know anything about Warhammer 40k, read it. If you don't, Maybe, possibly worth trying to read it, but you'd still have problems because it does require, like, you know, background knowledge of the universe. Kind of unfortunate. Um, but yeah. I thought that was a good question. <laughs> Mainly because I absolutely adore those books. I've read them so many times. Um, what was that? That was a personal one. Right, silly one. From the hidden bomb, is this a question? Well, you answered... Yes, because it says, is this a question, question mark, so... It's not in folk... It's got a question mark, so yes, it's a question. Booyah, Lloyd. Right, um... I think that was enough. I don't know what that I've probably got enough left for another video. I might do another video of this. If people want me to. Or if people don't want me to. Because why not? Um, also, because I've got, like, these have got, like, shit that's left. Look, like, many, many questions. Anyway, um... So it's a bit dark in here. I kind of need lights. I need more lights. Anyway, I've been Trillisium, and stay shiny!